Hello, everyone, and welcome to our virtual college fair for all Virginia students. We're super excited to have you all here. We have six great institutions here to share a little bit more about what they do. Uh, before we pass things off to them, I want to make sure that you understand the format for this session and have a few quick reminders before we send things over to our colleges and universities. Uh, so a reminder about the format, we have six institutions, each will present about their institution for six minutes. Uh, and then we might have time for Q&A at the end, um, but the college reps will be ready and able to answer questions throughout the session as well. So you might be wondering how you can ask those questions. You'll see this little Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, feel free to send questions through that Q&A at any point during the session, including while folks are presenting. Um, so the other colleges will be able to answer your questions behind the scenes while other folks are talking. Um, your camera and microphone are off and they will be off for the full session. So really that Q&A is the best way to interact with the college representatives. Uh, a reminder that there are additional sessions tomorrow. So feel free to check those out at www.strivescan.com backslash Virginia and that this session is being recorded. And so if you'd like to return to any of this information, you can do so within the next few days at that same exact link. Uh, but with that, we'll go ahead and kick things off with our first institution, which is the University of Delaware. And good afternoon and welcome. And thank you for spending some of your Thursday after, uh, Tuesday afternoon with us. Uh, it's pandemia time, so who knows what day we are in. Um, but at the University of Delaware, uh, my name is Luis Portillo. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions with the University of Delaware. Um, the first thing we always talk about when it comes to Delaware is our location. Where we're located is extremely, extremely important because we are all about expanding outside of the classroom. Um, we are in Newark, Delaware, not to be confused with Newark, New Jersey. Uh, we do pronounce both syllables, but for us, <clears throat> where we're located within a two hour radius of four major metropolitan cities, and those cities allow our students to expand what they're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom, and uh, also offers uh, large opportunities for co-ops and internships. When you think about being uh, within a two hour radius of DC, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and New York. Campus itself, we are a traditional um, college town, the city of Newark, we are a, a very green area space. If you were to actually measure our campus from North Campus to South Campus, it is exactly 1.27 miles long. And it only takes about 20 to 25 minutes to walk, depending on how quick your stride is. But as you can see, being established in 1743, we do offer a very colonial-esque type of architecture. Uh, you know, um, red brick, white window sills, the white pillars, etc. <clears throat> what the picture that you're looking at currently is a picture of East Campus. Uh, and that is pro probably where about 75% of all the action happens. That's where three, of our, three out of our four dining rooms are. That's where also a lot of our um, dorm rooms are for incoming freshmen. Uh, and I know when I say North, East, and South Campus, students are like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to take a bus to get from one side to the other. I promise you it's, it's an extremely, extremely walkable campus. Um, and it's when I say it's split between Main Street and a train track, uh, that's what our campuses are split by. So. At the University of Delaware, we're extremely uh, proud of a resource that we put together for you guys, udel.edu forward slash college prep. It really takes you a step-by-step -step process on how to apply with us here at, at the University of Delaware, but it could also work for other institutions. You know, um, If you're applying to a school that has SRAR, the self-reported academic record, um, it, we have a tutorial video that'll take you step-by-step -step process on how to fill that out. Um, and for those of you that don't know what the SRAR is, the SRAR is an opportunity for you to self-report all your academics on your transcript and your test scores if you decide to go, um, if you decide to apply to, with a test. Um, at the University of Delaware, we are test optional, <clears throat> but it also gives you some hints, uh, helpful hints and tips on writing your essay, um, coursework on, on what you'd be doing, what you should be doing your senior year, et cetera. So a nice little tool for y'all to use, um, uh, not only for Delaware, but uh, in general as well. On Delaware's campus, we have over 150 different majors, over 100 minors, over 50 plus one programs. <clears throat> For us, being the only flagship institution in the state of Delaware uh, with about 18,000 undergraduates, we really have to offer everything from STEM, uh, being a research institution, but we also have to offer things in the health, health sciences, uh, human, human science, uh, humanities, <laughs> sorry. Um, <clears throat> performing arts and things of that nature. So when you're looking at our majors, 
we do have a wide variety of them, uh, including education and human development and things like that. But the reason I show this slide is because our uh, major finder is a great tool for y'all to use to compare and contrast the majors that we have on our campus uh, for students. And it's one of those things that, um, you know, I get students all the time that are like, I wanna study psychology. When they explain what they wanna do, they're really talking about neuroscience. So our major finder really allows you to kind of break down uh, what's, in, what's uh, unique about our major, areas of study, um, different programs, different areas, uh, different graduate programs you can go to, a list of clubs and organizations that are specific to that major, <clears throat> and then the sample curriculum. Our Honors College, it stands on three different uh, pillars, challenge, enrichment, and community. Uh, challenge, smaller classrooms, more in-depth uh, rigor, enrichment, the senior capstone research project that you'd be doing in the community live, would be a living learning community along with an, ass an assigned peer mentor. And that peer mentor traditionally is a, a junior or senior, and nine times out of 10, they're the same major that you are. As I mentioned earlier, we do have, um, we're big on expanding uh, outside of the classroom. And so we have different scholars and fellows programs that you applied to after being admitted to the University of Delaware. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and for us, we have seven of them. And you know we have some that are more socially engaged, uh, like our community engagement program. We have some more academically engagement ones like our cybersecurity one. The newest one is our um, climate scholars program and our climate scholars program was actually developed by our environmental science and environmental engineering students um, to really take what they're learning in the classroom and take policies that they're putting into practice and put it into practice in the real world especially when you're co combating things like climate change you know that is a global issue not just a country issue not the U.S. issue so our students are taking what they're learning in the classroom and putting it in, in the real world the more popular one is our world scholars program that offers us students the opportunity to go ahead and study abroad as early as their first semester. Part of that requirement is to study again in their junior year. Fun fact, the University of Delaware was the first school in the entire United States to implement a study abroad program. So even if the World Scholars Program is not for you because you don't want to study abroad early, you're able to study abroad. Um, about 48% of our students do so and they travel to over 40 plus countries a year. This right here is my contact information. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can also find my uh, contact information through the udel.edu forward slash apply. You type in see, meet your counselor and that is where my contact information will be. And I, again, thank you guys so much for your attention. I will go ahead and pass it off to my colleague. Uh, and thanks again. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more about University of Delaware. Uh, from here, we'll go ahead and head on over to the University of East London. Thank you. Okay, let me just get my screen up. Um, hopefully you guys are able to see it. Um, my name is Caitlin and I am the America's Recruitment Officer at the University of East London and I'm going to discuss studying at UEL. But before I do, um, let's just talk about London. Um, so there's this quote that I love. Um, it says, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. Um, Samuel Johnson said that. And I really do think that that's true. So um, as you can tell by the accent, I am not British, I'm American. So I'm from California, um, did my undergraduate at UEL and I now work for the University of East London. And um, I've been very fortunate um, to be able to travel as uh, travel the world as part of my job. And no matter where I am, um, I think my heart will always be in London and um, I just always end up coming back here. So studying at UBL, um, we have three campuses based in East London. Um, you can trace our roots back to 1892 um, when we started out under a different name, but we gained university status in 1992. We have 17,000 students from all over the world. So our students come from 120 different countries and um, about 20% of our students are actually international students. Um, we have quite a lot of different programs of study on campus spread across six schools. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, later on in the presentation, but this is a photo of our main campus. Um, the photo is cut off just a little bit, but um, we are located right on the river. We have a public transport station right on campus. So um, London actually has one of the biggest public transport systems in the world. So being able to travel throughout London is very easy um, when you're living on campus. 
So here I've listed some of the key differences between studying in the UK versus studying in the US. I think the biggest sort of differences are the fact that our degrees are only three years long compared to the traditional four. Um, our tuition fees are just 17,000 US dollars um, and that includes your textbooks. So you won't be expected to upfront any um, additional costs per textbook. So for the entire degree, you are looking at just 51,000 US dollars. Whereas um, in the US, it's right around 100,000 and it can go up to about 200,000. Entry requirements. So we typically ask for a 3.0 GPA and one of the following test scores. So A1070 on the SAT, A23 on the ACT, or three AP scores of three or above. These are our standard entry requirements. So depending on the program that you apply for, um, you might have to also um, do an e-interview or an e-audition um, or submit a portfolio, but those are typically for our performing arts programs. So um, these are just three of the six schools that we have and the programs that fall underneath each school. These are definitely the biggest um, programs that fall under each school. So here is um, the School of Architecture, um, our art school, and then also our business and law school. And finally, the remaining three um, are our CAST school, um, School of Health, Sport and Bioscience, as well as our School of Psychology. But you can find um, our full course list on our website. Housing, I love to talk about housing, especially with the girls because our accommodation um, on the UEL campus um, is private. So what I mean by that is all students get their own room, their own bathroom and their own shower so they don't have to share with anyone. Um, so all of my friends growing up, um, they actually went to school in the US so they all had roommates in college. But um, I feel really lucky that I did not have to share my room or have to go through any kind of similar experience. And sports. I do have to talk about sports because we are such a big university on sports. I'm not the most sports minded person, so I'll probably breeze through this one. But um, back in 2012, when London hosted the Olympics, we actually hosted Team USA. Um, during the Olympics, they used our university as their base, as their training site. And so um, this is a photo of Team USA on our campus um, during one of their training sessions. Travel. So I know I did touch a bit on public transport. Um, I think as Americans, we are so used to driving and not having to rely on public transport unless you live in a city such as New York City. But um, when I moved over, I kind of had to switch gears in the sense that I had to learn how to take the train, learn how to take the bus. And the moment that I did learn, I was constantly taking public transport. It's one of my favorite things about London. It's so convenient to get around the city. And um, during when you're a student, you do have a bit of free time. So you are able to travel to Europe. And during longer school breaks, you are able to travel to um, back home, whether that's the US or Canada. You can apply through Common App on our website or through UCAS. I typically recommend applying through Common App and um, a photo of our lovely queen. If you guys have any questions, this is my email and also the North America admissions team Instagram. So feel free to check us out there. And I'm going to hand things back over to Isabella. Thank you guys. Great, thank you so much, Caitlin, for sharing more about University of East London. Uh, from here, we'll head on over to Virginia Wesleyan. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Paige. Uh, I am a enrollment counselor at Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, so it's my job to help students with the admissions process, financial aid questions, uh, and just making sure everything is a smooth transition process while y'all are going through your senior year. Uh, so who we are as a university, uh, we are Coastal Virginia's premier university of liberal arts and sciences. Uh, we're located right in between Norfolk and Virginia Beach. So we are right in the middle of the Hampton Roads area 
and it's a metropolitan area of 1.7 million people. So lots of opportunities for our students to have internships, undergraduate research, and even future job opportunities when they're getting uh, ready to graduate after their four years. Uh, we're also super close to the beach. So if you're a huge beach person, we might be a very good fit for you. We're 15 minutes away from Chicks Beach and about 20 minutes from the Virginia Beach Ocean Front. Uh, so our students love to hang out at the beach uh, once they're done studying and finish with class for the day. Uh, we're also like, located on 300 acres of land. So we're definitely a lot bigger than some people seem to believe. And we're patrolled 24 seven by our campus security. So you'll see them on campus, either walking by golf cart, bike or car. And I was excited to see uh, prospective families and students on our campus. Uh, so our student body, we have 1600 students on our campus. Uh, so we are on the smaller side, but we're big enough that you're not going to know every single person. You'll definitely recognize some faces in the uh, cadet clubs and organizations you get involved in. 43% uh, of our students come from underrepresented populations. Uh, we're actually in the uh, top most ethnically diverse liberal arts college in the country. We're very proud of this because we look like uh, the country and just very diverse. 75% uh, of our students do live on campus. Uh, that's just because they love living here so much and participating in our campus traditions. Uh, and we have a four-year housing guarantee. So our students are never without housing. We have apartments, townhouses, uh, as well as speed style living that our upperclassmen can choose to live in. So academically, uh, we offer 39 majors and 31 minors here, as well as several pre-professional programs. Uh, our top five most popular majors are business, psychology, criminal justice, biology, and earth and environmental science. Uh, we have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing partnership with Centera College of Health Sciences as well. Uh, we put an emphasis on soft skills such as problem solving, creative thinking, and communication skills. Uh, our classes are also four credits instead of the traditional three. The fourth credit is usually applied to outside group work. Uh, An average ratio for our classes are 13 to one. And all of our classes are taught by our professors as well. So we don't have teaching assistants helping the professors teach their class. Uh, our Baton Honors College, it is a selective enrollment process for our Honors College. It is also a separate application process. Uh, students do have to be admissible by the 3.5 or higher GPA and a 1300 on their SAT or a 27 or higher on their ACT. Although they have adopted a test optional policy as well, uh, the 20 students are select or 40 students are selected. Uh, I apologize uh, for the Baton Honors cohort each year. 20 students receive a full tuition scholarship and then another 20 receive a two third tuition scholarship. If y'all have questions, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, the Lighthouse is our one-stop shop for internships, undergraduate research, and study away opportunities. Uh, I know I've mentioned undergraduate research and internships before, but if you would like an internship, this is the place to go. Uh, we have study away opportunities, both internationally and domestically. We've had students study away in Japan for a semester. We had a student study away in Maui for a week. Uh, so if you'd like to go somewhere new and get exposed to a new culture, that's an opportunity for you. Uh, here as well. 90% uh, of our students uh, are either in graduate school or employed full time uh, within six months of their graduation from Virginia Wesleyan as well. So our athletic program, we are a division three athletic university. We participate in the old Dominion Athletic Conference. Uh, our women's softball team is national champions two years in a row. Uh, we have a brand new esports team. And even if you aren't interested in playing a sport, uh, all of our home games are free for students to attend. And we also have club sports such as like ultimate frisbee or flag football. So if you just wanna play for fun on campus. Uh, so tuition room and board here at Virginia Wesleyan is approximately $46,000 a year. Uh, I wanna let you guys know, no one pays that price. 98% of our students here receive financial aid, not only from us through merit scholarships, uh, but also from the FAFSA. So if you add us to your FAFSA, we'll give you a $1,000 grant. If you visit us either virtually or in person, we'll give you another $1,000 grant. Uh, we all, the big thing we have are the merit scholarships I mentioned. Typically it's based off of a student's GPA and their SAT or their ACT scores. And those can go up to $24,000 a year. And it's money we're awarding you guys for working so hard. 
uh, best part, our application process, our application is on our website uh, and it's free to apply, no letters of recommendation or essay are required. And for the fall 2021 semester years, we are uh, adopting a test optional policy. So if you don't have test scores, we're not gonna penalize you, just your application and official transcript to get you a decision. And we're on rolling admission. So if you don't have um, an SAT score and wanna update your application after initially getting a decision, uh, you can always uh, send that over to us later on your school year. Any questions, feel free to contact us. Thanks again for signing on and I will turn everything back over to Isabella. Awesome, thank you so much Paige for sharing a little bit more about Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, before we head on over to our next institution, I do wanna make a very quick plug for that Q&A. And so if you have any questions about the institutions you've already heard from or any of the ones that you're about to hear from, don't forget that you can send those on over through that Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to Christopher Newport University. Great, thanks Isabella. Hi everybody, I uh, hope you're enjoying your day so far. My name is Kelly Scallion. I'm the Associate Director of Admission at Christopher Newport uh, University. I'm also a very proud CNU alum, so I love talking to students about my experience uh, as a CNU captain. Uh, just a few fast facts about who we are. Um, so Christopher Newport's a public liberal arts and sciences university of about 5,000 students, and we're in Newport News, Virginia, which is not too far from Virginia Wesleyan, who you just heard from. We're almost halfway between Colonial Williamsburg and Virginia Beach, so we are part of that Hampton Ridge community. Uh, it's a really great area to live and to learn uh, and many of our graduates stick around in that area after leaving our, our campus. Um, the campus itself we are about 5,000 students which is a good happy medium. Um, we're a little on the smaller side for a public university so it kind of gives you that feel of the best of both worlds. You know when you're looking at large public universities you're looking for resources and opportunities such as research and studying abroad and academic offerings and clubs and organizations. Uh, resources like free counseling and tutoring and things like that. And we have all of those things. Uh, and at 5,000 students, it's large enough to where you're definitely not going to know everyone. Uh, there are always new faces uh, to see and new people to meet and new things to get involved in. Uh, but on the other side of that, it's also small enough to where you're not going to get lost in the mix. You're not going to be taking buses to get to your classes and passing thousands and thousands of strangers every day. Uh, everywhere you go on campus, you feel that sense of community. Uh, you'll see at least a few familiar faces. You'll see dining hall ladies that know your name, professors who remember you from two years ago. Um, and so that sense of community is a huge draw for students to our campus. Uh, it feels like home. It feels like you have a support system uh, and a group of people that are really surrounding you and just lifting you up and encouraging you to, uh, to be better and to kind of get outside of your comfort zone. Um, I should also note that Christopher Newport is uh, definitely a values-based institution. Um, so we really value things like leadership and service and honor. Uh, it's a big part of our culture. A lot of service-minded students come to our campus uh, and really want to get involved uh, outside the classroom as well as uh, in the classroom. In terms of our academic offerings, I mentioned we're a liberal arts and sciences university, so we have a lot to offer. Uh, we've got over 90 different areas of study to choose from, and a lot of our students are studying more than one thing. So if you're kind of stuck between two different options and you don't know which to choose, maybe you don't have to. So uh, you do see a lot of students on our campus double majoring or multiple minors and things like that. Um, some of the popular areas, business uh, is a big one. We have an internationally accredited business school. Uh, we also have great programs in STEM, um, a huge biology department, a lot of inter uh, students interested in going maybe pre-med or pre-vet, uh, uh, anything else in the health field. We offer pretty much everything except for nursing. Um, Political science is another big one. Uh, we're really close to the Richmond State Capitol and just a few hours away from Washington, DC. And we've had students intern in every branch of the government by the time they graduate. Um, so there's some really good opportunities there. Uh, and then finally, I would say computer science and engineering are really big programs at CNU as well. And we just added a major in cybersecurity. Um, so lots of offerings in terms of academics. And then in, as part of kind of our academic culture, we really encourage students to do things like undergraduate research, studying abroad, internships, and there are a lot of support systems on campus uh, to help our students achieve those things. Uh, outside the classroom, our students are very active as well. Uh, if you ever come visit us, which I hope you will, uh, you'll definitely notice that our students work really hard, uh, but they also play hard. We've got over 200 different clubs and organizations to choose from, which is a lot for a school our size. Uh, and that's everything from traditional fraternities and sororities, uh, exceptional athletic programs, uh, to things like the Chicken Nugget Appreciation Club and the Lightsaber Club. And so, uh, there's no excuse not to get involved. Uh, I've been around Christopher Newport for over 15 years and I've never really met a student that just 
us and hung out in their room and all they did. Um, so our students are really uh, interested in getting out there and participating and really being part of the community and the culture on our campus. Um, I did mention athletics. We are uh, NCAA Division Three program and we're usually the top 25 out of the 400 plus D3 schools across the country. So um, the captains play at a really high level. Um, we have some incredible athletic facilities and we have some great club and intramural sports as well. Um, most of our students live on campus. I think that's one of the reasons why they're so connected to the community. Uh, we do have a three-year residency requirement. So don't let that scare you off. Our residence halls are some of the nicest in the state. We've actually ranked in the top 10 on the Princeton Reviews rankings for our dorms. Um, and so we do have some really beautiful residence halls. Uh, in terms of applying to the university, we are on the Common App or the Coalition. We don't really have a preference either way. Uh, and we really take a holistic approach to the admission process. So we don't just look at one GPA or one test score and make a decision right off the bat um, based on a number. We look at every part of your application before we make a decision. Uh, we are test optional. We've been test optional for over 15 years. So we definitely know how to review applications that don't include test scores on them. Um, and if you have test scores and want to send them, that's fine too. Uh, we've also waived the SAT and ACT requirement for our merit-based scholarship programs. Um, over a third of our students receive a merit scholarship through the President's Leadership Program or the Honors Program. The largest of those, the leadership Leadership program uh, is a huge draw for students that are interested in, in Christopher Newport. They get a minor in leadership studies. They get a, a scholarship of up to $10,000 per year, as well as a stipend to study abroad. So definitely look into those programs. Um, you can see some of our deadlines and some of our mid ranges up there. Um, if you are interested in coming to visit campus, we are open for in person uh, tours and on campus interviews. So I would hope that you would visit our freshman admission page and take a look at some of those opportunities. Um, that's just a little bit of a taste about. Christopher Newport. So I will go ahead and stop here. And hopefully, if you have any questions for me, just drop those in the Q&A. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kelly, sharing a little bit more about Christopher Newport. Uh, from here, we'll head on over to Stony Brook. All right. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining again today. I know you've gotten a few thank yous already today. Um, but my name is Rachel. I am one of the out-of-state admissions counselors here at Stony Brook University. Um, I cover from Delaware all the way to Florida, so I have quite a bit of territory. Um, I am joined today by one of our students. Uh, his name is Sachin, and you'll hear from him in a little bit. Uh, he is one of our student ambassadors. He's currently a senior in our one of our honors colleges, the Honors College. We have three options there. Um, and he is also majoring in biology and sociology. So if those are some of your interests, definitely chat in those questions. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Stony Brook University, we are located in Long Island, New York. So we are about um, 60 miles east of New York City. So the media capital of the world opens up a lot of opportunities for our students to both intern and a lot of our students will go on to pursue careers in the city. Um, but then another 60 miles east of us is Montauk. So we definitely pride ourselves in our location. We're kind of the best of all different um, climates and worlds. Uh, Montauk is more of like a beachy vibe. So if you're into more of the slower pace, um, I'm from the east end of Long Island. So I grew up around farms. Uh, I love it out there. And then obviously we have the city life on the other end. So being smack in the middle of both of those things at Stony Brook University, we're more of a suburban area, so we're not in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, you have all your shopping malls and eateries and nice little towns surrounding us. And then the closest beach, um, which we are surrounded by, but the one that's closest to us is about seven minutes away and that's West Meadow. Um, but this is an aerial view of our campus. So we are on just over a thousand acres. Uh, we were founded in the year 1957. Uh, this is more so our main campus, our west campus. We do also have an east campus, which is um, the hospital side. So if you have any interest in pre-med or anything medical, you'll likely spend some time over there. We also do have another campus uh, further on the east end, which is our Southampton campus. And that is dedicated to our School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences and our health technology management programs, which are graduate level. We are a large size public institution and are part of the SUNY system, which is the State Universities of New York. We currently have just over 18,000 students right now for undergraduate and just over 26,000 total students. 
So as far as the most recent news at Stony Brook, we're calling this the Wolfie briefing because uh, Wolfie is actually our um, mascot. So you'll see him in a little bit as well. We are going test optional. You'll see this across the board with SUNY schools uh, through spring 2022. We're hoping to possibly keep that. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, that's a definite for now. You can still submit your scores if you want to. Uh, they would just have to be sent officially through SAT or ACT. Our new student union just opened too. This has become a one-stop shop. So financial aid, your student ID card, um, advisement, all of those things are all in one place. So it's really nice, especially when you're a new student, you're kind of going there, getting all of your processes done that are necessary to start college. Uh, and it's a really nice open airy space. Our newest majors are globalization studies and international relations. It is exactly what it sounds like. They've incorporated a really cool portion though that includes an internship and they very much encourage studying abroad very pertinent to the major, very uh, timely for right now. So we're very excited to roll that out. Uh, and we have been ranked as number one in reducing uh, social inequality uh, by times higher education. So essentially what this means is we have been able to provide access to higher education to students who would otherwise not be able to do so uh, in low socioeconomic background. So we're very proud of that as well. We do have over uh, 200 academic uh, programs. This does include our majors and minors. I will not get into all of them right now. Um, our school or College of Arts and Sciences is the largest of these. Um, and then our School of Health Technology and Management, School of Nursing and School of Social Welfare are all upper division programs. So these are programs or schools that you wouldn't apply to until your junior year. But there are, is a lot to choose from. Most of our students will double major like Sachin is, uh, or at least major and minor. We do also have pre-professional preparation in healthcare, law, medicine, dental, and veterinary, as well as teaching only at the secondary level, but we have it. And we do have our own school of medicine and school of dental medicine. All of these are tracks. So you would meet with an advisor in addition to your major advisor, uh, your minor advisor, and your um, traditional advisor to make sure that you're staying on track, getting any prerequisites done, any volunteer experience, anything that you need, test preparation to then apply to any of these areas after your four years. So I'm going to pass it over to Sachin and he is going to cover this slide for you guys. So Stony Brook University is a campus that really prides itself on our diversity, whether that's in terms of race and ethnicity, sexuality, gender, religion, or country of origin. So our on-campus activities and student involvement opportunities are a really strong reflection of this value because we have over 400 clubs and organizations, 18 D1 athletic teams, and a robust intramural sports community. So at Stony Brook, you really can find an organization for every single person. For example, we have fantastic cultural organizations that represent every cultural group on campus from East Asia to Africa and South Asia to Latin America and the Caribbean. If you're religious, you can form communities in the variety of student organizations, such as the Muslim Student Association, Hindu Student Council, and a number of Christian and Jewish groups. We have spectacular singing groups like the Stony Brook Pipettes, our vibrant spirit of the uh, spirit of Stony Brook marching band, and our fantastic performance dance teams ranging from our hip hop uh, dance crew, Pusa Modern, to um, our ballroom team, to the belly dancing groups and our traditional African, Latin and South Asian cultural teams. So there are also a variety of opportunities to volunteer in your organizations, whether that's through Greek life or service organizations like Global Medical Brigades, where you can train and run trips to provide student led organ, uh, medical missions across the world, as well as Camp Kesson, which runs a week long summer camp for students who's, uh, for kids whose parents had or have cancer. So we have a notable LGBTQ organization on campus with its own center that runs a number of events throughout the year, as well as great traditions like Homecoming, Rothergata, and a Stony Brook concert series that features artists like Post Malone and ASAP Ferg. So truly we have an option for everyone to connect on campus as a community. Thank you, Sachin. So I see Isabella popping up. So I'm going to skip to the end. Uh, if you guys do have any questions, shoot them my way. Um, six minutes goes very fast. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to just write down my email address, that is all of our contact information. We're on all things social media. We do have live chat and texting as well. So feel free to reach out with any other questions. 
great. Thank you both so much for sharing a little bit more about Stony Brook. I agree, six minutes does tend to go pretty fast. Uh, but from here, we'll head on over to our final institution of the session, which is University of Alabama. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Dugas, and I am the University of Alabama's Regional Recruiter for Virginia. I live and work out of my house in Charlottesville. Um, and I will just give you a quick overview. I'll be as fast as possible. Um, but this is just a quick overhead shot of our campus. It's gorgeous. It's green. It is always that green and that clean. Um, we are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Um, Tuscaloosa is a little bit bigger than Charlottesville. And it's about an hour from Birmingham, which is about the same size as Richmond. Um, you can get there by flying into Birmingham or taking the train right into downtown Tuscaloosa, or you can drive um, all of our students, including freshmen, are allowed to have cars on campus. Um, but you can see it's a vibrant downtown, good um, art scene. Um, so there is a federal courthouse. There's a river that's kind of the north border of campus. So we have a nice river walk and um, riverfront amphitheater as well, and plenty of places to go out and for your friends to, um, to come visit you, places for people to stay and everything like that. Um, as far as our undergraduate enrollment, we have 32,000 students undergraduate. 59% um, of whom are from out of state. So even though we are a public institution, um, the state flagship of the University of the state of Alabama, um, most of our students do come from out of state and Virginia is one of the top 10 states that we get students from. We do have students from all 50 states on our campus. This is our freshman class profile. Um, our average GPA is about a 3.8 and the average test score is a 1270 SAT or a 27 ACT but we are test optional this year, at least for 2021. I expect that will continue for 2022, although we haven't fi finalized that decision yet, but you will not be penalized for applying without a test score in the application process or the scholarship process or the honors process as well. So um, I'm really proud of that. Um, this is our list of majors. So we have most everything, though certainly not quite everything. Um, but all of them are strong. We are a Carnegie R1 Research University, so all of them have undergraduate research opportunities in them. Um, you can double major, of course, double minor as well. I did that. Um, you can also design your own major through what we call New College, which is not new. It is older than I am, but it has always been called New College. Um, so that's an option too. So Honors College has recently announced that it will also be test optional. So normally it takes a 3.5 high school GPA and a 1360 or a 30 to be admitted to Honors, but at least this year, just a 3.7 GPA will get you in as an incoming freshman without a test score or without regard to your test score. And you always have had the other test optional pathway, which is to just wait till after one semester at the university, as long as you get at least a 3.5 in that semester, then you're eligible for Honors after that semester. And there are nine distinct programs within the Honors College. There's a general program. Um, I was in that one. That's just take a certain number of Honors classes by the time you graduate. But there's also a liberal arts program. There are two ways to get an MBA in five years. There are ways to get a master's in five years. Um, there is a pre-med specialized program. Um, there's a leadership program and a research program as well. Campus life, as you can imagine, very vibrant with a school of our size. Um, over 600 organizations and the largest Greek system in the nation, um, but it's only about a third of our students, so you don't feel like you have to get involved in it. It's merely one more way to get involved. We have excellent food. We have the largest Starbucks on any college campus in the country, and we rank number two in the nation for internship placement according to the Princeton Review. So plenty of ways to get involved on and off campus in your major as well. As for housing, I won't spend much time on this one, but we do have some of the nicest housing options that you will find in the country. Most of our students, including most of our freshmen, do live in a suite style where there are four bedrooms and two baths in each suite. So you do get your own bedroom. You share a bathroom with only one other person and you share a kitchen and a living room with three other people. Although we do have two double occupancy options as well. So that's where you'd be sharing a room. But most of our students don't live in this. Um, we do have Division I athletics. Most people know that. Um, we're not playing to 101,000 fans right now. It's more like 21,000, but students are still able to go to the games um, just on a partial season ticket package this year, as opposed to normally it would be a full season ticket package. Um, but we do have 21 Division I teams. We're ranked in most of them most of the time. Football is ranked number two right now. And we have over 60 club and intramural sports as well. And we're very much known for our school spirit. We do say Roll Tide all the time. So application process, it's rolling admission only, so no early action or decision. You always have until May to decide. 
All we need this year is your application, $40 app fee or a fee waiver, and your high school transcript. Nothing else required. Um, you can submit test scores if you so choose, but you won't be penalized for not doing so. And the priority deadline is January 15th to have everything in, including your scholarship application. So this is our merit scholarship chart. This is for students who do have a test score. If you have a test score and a GPA that puts you onto this chart, you will automatically get this scholarship, no questions asked, no special scholarship um, application required for these. But keep in mind the GPA is weighted, but the test score is not super scored. If you do not have a test score or you don't have one that puts you onto the other chart, this is what I'm most excited about. This is our competitive scholarship chart. So this is fully test optional. Um, it's just based on your core GPA, which is your math, science, English, social studies, and world language courses. And then your scholarship application, which is where you put in your leadership, extracurriculars, community service, honors, achievements, anything you've overcome. And if you have really significant involvement, that can get you a scholarship as well, according to this chart, again, without regard to your test. And this is my contact info. If you do have any follow-up questions or anything, feel free to reach out. You can also use that top link there if you would like a brochure mailed to you, or you can use the middle link if you would like to just see the brochure online um, in a PDF form. Or like I said, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, have a great day and roll tide. Awesome, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing a little bit more about the University of Alabama as well. Um, and so I think that is about as much time as we have for this session. So a big thank you to all of you for joining us to learn a little bit more about each of these institutions. And also a huge thank you to our college representatives for joining us uh, today as well. So a quick note that you will see a very quick four question survey appear on your screen as soon as the session ends. So if you don't mind taking an extra moment to fill that out, it's really helpful for all of us to get a little bit of feedback on these types of sessions. A reminder that there are more sessions throughout today and tomorrow, and you can check those out at www.strivescan.com backslash Virginia. And at that very same link, you'll be able to view a recording of this session within the next few days. Uh, so keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, so a big thank you to all of you once again, a big thank you once again to our college representatives, and perhaps most importantly, I hope that everyone has a great day. Thank you so much. See you all.